Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name's Judy and you are watching Running So and So and it's another episode of Friday Sews. It's Tuesday evening, I've just come in from work. I need a cup of tea. Anyway, thank you so much for watching my last week's vlog and the one before. And if you're new to my channel, thank you for watching all of the vlogs <laughs> because I've had loads of comments on some of my older vlogs which is absolutely wonderful. A special thank you to Sally for the coffee. Thank you so much, Sally. It's very, very much appreciated. Let's get on with what I am wearing. I am wearing my lovely new toaster sweater with flat lock seams in my lovely wattle and slate athleisure wear jersey. The reason I'm wearing this tonight is I've just filmed the intro for the flat locking special. I have got the most incredibly busy week. I had Hannah to see me yesterday evening after having had a busy weekend. It's gone. But tomorrow evening, I'm losing my Wednesday evening, which I usually have two evenings a week at home where I can get on with what I want to do and catch up with some cooking or some baking because I like to try and get my meals sort of roughly prepared for the week. But tomorrow I've got a governor's meeting for school because I am currently a school governor. Anyhow, I lose an evening. So tonight... I'm going to get on with something that is on the overlocker. And so the first thing I've done was I've tried to show you my overlocker working when it's studied up for flat locking. But then I come to show you a couple of key little things. And that is getting your overlocker to take your work really efficiently. Now, I have discovered that overlockers will just take your work. That's not the problem. But if you want to get it in and get that really firm cut have a look at this. Now when you put your fabric in to start, if you lift your oh, your blades up to the highest point, it'll match the highest point of your needle. Lift it up there and lift up. There's my presser foot going up and down. Lift your presser foot up. You will find that your work will slide in much e more easily, ready to be taken to start sewing. Unfortunately, I cannot video at the same time. You see how the work, there it goes, slides. I'm really sorry if it's out of focus slightly. I'm trying to sort of stand back and watch it going in. I'm trying to do three jobs at once. But it's hit the back of the blade there. And the minute I put the presser foot down, it'll engage it. Now, my machine will not work until that presser foot is down. And excuse the noise, but it will take, look at that. Go steadily to start with until we've got that lovely bit of thread here starting to hang down. Just take it really, really steadily. And then I realised that I had did something else with my overlocker. Now, my overlocker is great, but it does not like thick fabric. I do have a new set of blades for it, but at the moment I've decided not to put them on just yet because I'm wondering if it is operator error rather than machine error. It's very easy to say the machine's doing this, the machine's doing that, the machine's doing the other. It could just be you, have you checked your settings properly? And as you know, I'm a great one for instruction booklets or instruction leaflets. I've still got the baby lock leaflet if you've watched the flat locking thing. Upstairs next to the bed, I have got my Benina O. My banana, my big banana, this one here. I've got its handbook upstairs because I have to do something with the stitch density on Tristan's beer motif. I can't remember how to do it, but it's in there. So I'll check that out. So what I'm doing before I change, but the point is before I change the um, blades on my overlocker, I want to see if there's anything else I can do. So I've had a little play with stitch width, stitch length. I've had a play with differential feed, which is great. Um, and the other thing that I do when I come to thick seams is this. Now, my overlocker is very good, but when I have thick seams, like it's going over a joint there, it just doesn't like them. So this is what I do. I've got it set for a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. I simply snip down by half a centimeter at the seam and snip it off. The machine loves it. It will it'll go through that, it'll cut from there and it'll pick up that, no problem. 
So there you go. Now, I will come back to these trousers and hopefully later in the week they will be ready. And if all being well, they'll be ready for you, me to show you them on Thursday and Melanie can take a picture. The orchid dress is coming together, but I fell out with it. Let me just go and get it and show you why I fell out with it. It's just here. It's, I've not fallen out with it that I need to throw it in the bin. Far from it. What I fell out with was the way something had sewn. Now, to look at it from the front, it was absolutely fine. To look at it from the back, it wasn't good enough. I was taught initially when I was sewing, I was a hand embroiderer. So the back has to be as good as the front. And I try as far as it practically possible to do the same with my sewing. So I put this binding on down the side here. I've taken it off now. There it is. It wasn't good enough on it, the front, it looked beautiful. The top stitching was lined up beautifully. But inside, dreadful. Just didn't like it. So I've undone it. I'm going to iron it flat and I'm going to tack it with a small tacking stitch. And I'm going to use a thread that is a very similar colour, so if I can't get it out, it doesn't matter. I'm sorry, I am a complete and utter fuss pot. But what I can show you is, on the orchid dress, I've actually got the sleeves tacked in, um, pinned in, ready to go. They're just here. Um, I am going to the Isoso Day in Sheffield on the 4th of February and I want to wear it even though it's got a little bit of glitter in it. I thought it'd be quite nice for my sewing day. Um, I haven't sewn in the sleeves yet and I've also missed off a line of top stitching here across the front of the oak. And I'm going to pop that in because along the back I have a double line of top stitching. And inside here, I'm really pleased with the way the inside lies here. But down the side of the um, binding, it wasn't as neat. Push my tea out of the way, can you see? I like it to look neat. I haven't put a label in. I'm horrendous at putting labels in. I did a pattern recently and it goes, now put a label in. It was the one I'm pattern testing and it said, now is a good time to put a label in. And I thought... Now it's a good time to put a label in. I'll, I'll put a label in. And I've got some very special labels and I will show you all of that when I can. Now, so this is how it is coming together. Now this, I'm not doing very well. This is the waist here. This bit is the waist. And that has a very sort of different waistband. I'm still trying to work out how that goes on and hopefully tonight I might get onto it. And there's another make I made. I made a toaster, another toaster sweater. I just made one one. I made this and I thought I'm going to make, I want another one. So I made a white one as well. And it's in Well, I think I'm going to bring my Friday shows to a close. It's only very short this week. Um, life can be really, really busy sometimes and it can be really busy for the happiest of reasons. And as you can see, last night, I was sewing along with my orchid dress to um, be on the Pink Doors uh, Thursday Zoom. Hi, Judy. Say hi, hello. Judy. Hi, hi, Judy. Friday hi. shows on Thursday. Oh, which was great fun. I have made super progress on this. Um, no, wait a minute. Have I got the skirt bit here? I've got the skirt bit there. I don't need that bit. I need the top bit. I have now got my bands on the dress beautifully. Um, look down the side here. And this is what I wanted on the inside. I wanted a really smooth, can you see? Really smooth finish on the inside. I've got double top stitching on the yoke. Yes, here we go. I keep looking at the shoulder seams thinking, is that the yoke? No, it's not. I've got my double top stitching at the front yoke here. Can you see there? I don't think it's going to show up properly there. So that's coming together. I've actually got the, the um, sleeves in. I just need to neaten those. And the dress is coming together on the skirt. It's all pinned together. And the next thing is I've just done last night. I did the, I know I did it. The top stitching on the pockets. Um, I remember when I was with Lorianne last year and we were making our fringe dresses and we went over the top on the top, top stitching. And it is good fun to do the top stitching. Sorry, I'm looking, I'm looking down at you. I'm trying to get it into focus on my glasses. 
There you can see it there beautifully, look. So I'm really pleased with that. So what I thought I'd do is I'm going to stop and then next week I'm going to have a better attempt. I'm going to video more starting tomorrow when I'm sewing this weekend. I was looking for something in the sewing room earlier this week and I came across this fabric uh, which I bought uh, probably about 18 months to two years ago from Bugweeds. And then I saw this one, which was still up drying from the knitting and stitching show. It had been washed. It was just in the room where I do the drying. And I thought, hmm, what could I do with these two nice and quick for work over my new leggings? And I was thinking, toaster sweater with an eyelet over the top. Now, those are two really quick makes. And just let me think aloud and show you my thought processes here. This is navy. The leggings are navy. Now, I know I said I wasn't going to start anything else until I'd finished, but I do need clothes for work because what I've got is wearing out. And I'm not buying fabric, I'm using from my stash. So I could re-thread the overlocker quickly to ordinary stitch because it's blue and blue and it's so quick. Quickly whiz that up and then finish it off with the top stitching when I top stitch the leggings. But I could also whip up a quick toaster in this and I could wear it underneath the eyelet and that would be another couple of tops to wear for work during the cold weather. So I've just put those to one side. The other thing I was thinking about is I'm just thinking about joining in with the um, jacket sewing that the Northern Soul Sisters are doing and I just thought well I think about it. I'm not going to make any kind of promises because I've got a lot on anyway. Um, because I've got a couple of pattern tests coming, more pattern tests coming up that I know I've got to do. But the jacket that I've thought about is a Tamarack jacket by the Grainline Studio. I do have the fabric for it. I bought it last year. And I, there's, I want to do it in a certain way. So I, I'm hoping they've not stuck a deadline on when it's got to be done by. But I'm thinking I might, I might sort of do a jacket. I'm not quite certain I will. I'm not quite certain if I won't. But I've thought about it, and that's what I'll be doing. The more I think about it, the more I'm thinking, yeah, actually, I do want to do it, because my mind's going as to how I can do it and the style I want to do it in, and I think it would work really, really well. So it might be the nudge that I need to make a jacket. So thank you ever so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos, to comment on my videos, and when you press the like as well, or if, and when you subscribe, if you just click, um, I think it's down here. There's a little thing that says subscribe. If you click on that, it'll take you to the link to subscribe to the channel. And there's a little bell. If you tick that, it says, if you, if you click that, it'll tell you next, each time I put a new vlog out. But thank you so very, very much for watching. And I'm pretty certain I've said thank you to Sally for the coffee. If I haven't, Sally, I'm saying it again. And if I said it twice in the same video, I've said it twice in the same video, but I've said it. Thank you so much. It was really, really